All right, microphone check. You already know the Gemini. You know the fucking vibes. Gemini Scorpio podcast episode 58. 58. Uh, we here. The whole gang is in the building. It was snowing today, but it ain't a snowstorm. So everybody pulled up, even mm. though it wasn't a lot of snow on the ground. I pulled up to um Lante crib to get the uh the lens and shit. He and was ready to throw you under the bus. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Or... Like everything, like the whole, all, all the streets was clear. But I was like, you want know, to take your day off, but whatever. Episode, they back. Yeah, we back. Episode 58 is uh here. Um, the whole gang is here. Hilla Bay is here. You already know. Alex is here. Yeah, Alexander the Blanc is here. Yeah, Alex took no, a day y'all. off. Like he, like, he don't know better. No, he okay. We I was, talk, I was talk. going through a lot. We talk. I'm going to talk about it on the podcast. You going to talk about it? Hold the fuck up. When I'm, I'm going through a lot, bit. I still got to be right fucking here. Yeah. I'm pretty sure you talked to your friends while, while you was in the uh, room. Cut the bullshit. Like, but I'm the, here. It be the, uh, what y'all say? The audacity for me as if you ain't talked to your friends while y'all was in there. What is your point to say that he wasn't here when he was talked to you? Oh, okay. That was a good That's one. what I thought. That was um, good. Hey, that Hiller was good. Bay is here. You know what I'm saying? I have arrived officially. Okay. That was good. I'm going to really arrive <laughs> when Lex come over here with these drinks because uh, you know that's when I show up. He's trying to get active. When a porty store. All right, man. Let's get to it, man. The whole gang is in the building. Uh, thanks for all the people that's just, this might be your first time listening. Thanks for the all time supporters. You know what I'm saying? Gemini Scorpio Podcast. I am the Gemini. I am the Scorpio. Yeah. Gemini. And our producer, Alex. There's a cancer. The cancer. Yeah, the cancer. A yeah, crybaby cancer yeah. this week. It was, it was a mess today. You was today. crying too? Nah, not like that, but a little uh, bit. You was crying too? Oh, you wanted somebody to be crying with you. That man, the only one that don't be... No, man, whatever. Uh, Yo no, ass crying. Talk Listen, I be crying. Talk, be crying. Talk, <laughs> talk about it. I be crying. But the whole gang is in the building. Oh, uh, let me see. What's where we going to go? From right to left. Uh, I got Lante Base God in the building. Pink Celebrity is here. Um, Sexy Lexi Lex in the city. What 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 do we call her? Like uh, Lex is in a building. Yes, look um, at the drink. You seen the strut? Oh, got, you know she's strut. Come on, but come on. Uh, right foot left. Okay, come through yes. the back. Yes, okay. I like that energy. Okay, okay. okay. Oh. Ooh, it's creative. Oh shit! It was right. creative. <laughs> what the fuck is going on? Um, I thought, oh, Shadi must got a special drink. I do. I know I do. Wow. Okay. You um. Wa- Wyman J Productions is in the building. Gio De Leo is in the building. Uh, special audience guest only audience guest today is my guy C's. A uh, shout out to Bars on I ninety five. He's yes, in the building. Sir. Uh, enjoying the show as people like to do. Um. Yo, you know what I don't fuck with? I'm sorry. It's what I don't fuck with. Thank you, Lexi. How we start an uh, audible? Nah. <laughs> I, you know. Nah. Cause I, I just, I just, it just made me think. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to, to, to C's. Right. I don't fuck when when niggas try to support you in the dark. Mm. So you know, a lot of people be like, uh, a lot of people be be like, yo, I appreciate the support and things like that. I don't know why I, why I draw that line because we had a special guest that we came did. not too long ago and he was Real like, popular. Hey, right? He ain't want he ain't want his face in the video, but he wanted to talk on the camera. Yeah, and I, so it's like talk part of, on the mic, but yeah. he didn't want to put his face in the camera. Facts. A part of me was like, damn, it's dope for him to even acknowledge us and pull <laughs> up. You know what I'm saying? Like it was dope to be acknowledged by somebody that's popping in the industry and prominent in the industry. Mm-hmm. But you didn't want me to say you was here. Like that's mm. I don't like I don't know. I, what's it, what, what that's like that's like that? that's like Jay Z pulling up and like, but don't tell nobody I'm here. It's like well, I love whoa, you. Whoa, like, that ain't like Jay Z. That was a stretch. Hell right. yeah! Like I'm just saying, but like, like Jay Z pull up. She talking about far as the the, the, um, it's the just recognizing like, okay. his voice. It's like okay, but they're gonna know. Ah, they wow. wouldn't know you him. Know. They wouldn't know him. But I mean, apparently, they know. <laughs> Oh, you hey, said apparently. Oh, yo, oh, wow. y'all funny as shit. That's petty. <laughs> Come on, hey, yo. I'm not saying it like that. I'm just saying, like. But no, apparently he he's people definitely. People know. Yeah, definitely. He, he's, he's lit for real. I'm double nah, compliment. I get what, yeah, yeah, he's lit. He's, I get y'all it. petty I get in it. the nah, he's, he's popular where people would know who he is. Yeah. yeah. All I'm saying is. I don't know how I feel about it. Well, it's the thing is, you can pull up support. You know what I'm saying? We typically have a, today's like the first time we only had like one, one person per, yeah. in the audience. We typically have a lot of people that pull up, but don't be like, I want to be on a mic, but don't show my face because I. But, not but, even but that. then you again, you know what though? You posted or like that? I but you know what though? Sometimes like, you know, sometimes it's really about politics too. Mm, and um, I'm trying okay. to be understanding on that aspect because sometimes like, for example, depending on the conversation, he can't really partake in post. The conversation, but maybe I don't know. Posting, I'm just trying to figure out. You know how, how this is a regular thing we do. We yeah. go around the room. Shout out to everybody that's here. But you couldn't say his name because that's my only. That's it. Like so I'm, you don't I, want, right? I right. think it's mm-hmm. dope that you. I, I appreciate your shit. I'm. I'm gonna be the first one to say thank you. I still say thank you. But it's like now I got to audible or alter how I do my show because you don't want me to say your name. And that's just kind of weird. Like yeah. damn, mm-hmm. I can't say that. Such and such, 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 such,
that would be dope for me. Like, mm-hmm. so don't have staff it. If you're gonna do it, do it all the way. If Basically. you support and support, right? Shout but, out to our supporters. Yeah, no. shout out to all the supporters, man. Definitely no, we really y'all. appreciate y'all. The How was y'all week, man? The loves be lit. Fucking hated this week. Um, I don't know what the fuck it is, but this was a rough week for me. Us, uh, you got something to say? Because nope. I heard, oh, because I heard you, I heard your breath. So it's particularly a particularly. Particularly, what the uh-huh. fuck? <laughs> I just said away. Anyway, it was a fucking rough week because, <laughs> yo, I didn't realize that the pandemic really took a toll on me and is working from home shit. And there'd be times I bring it up, but y'all pray for the families that are stuck at home and also stuck at home while their kids are going to school at home. Because honestly, this is officially going on a year in March that I've been working from home where I'm literally only looking at the four walls every single day. Um, and it's kind of a big deal for me because it fucks up my inspiration. So like if you are a person who like, you know, thoroughly enjoys being outside, like I thoroughly used to enjoy my train rides into DC, being able to leave my office and go out and see the flowers fucking blossom and the sky and the architect and the people and the tourists and having conversations. And when you're in the house and you're just in your computer, the conversations, they're minimum to none. It really fucks up your uh, inspiration, your social interaction. And it didn't really dawn on me till this week that it was just a lot, like literally Mm -hmm. a lot for me. So I kind of had like a rough week just dealing with that and re reflecting on like, damn, um, we really don't know when this is going to be over. Um, And then I had, a meeting with my boss and she's like yeah you know so they're calling for this till 2022 and although i do love working from home what? i just kind of still want the option because i don't like to feel like i'm in jail upside to my week though you know if you do work in corporate america sometimes these things can make or break your job and i received an exceptional performance evaluation and if you are in corporate you know that this literally can make or break you right. if you do not have a good performance evaluation. This is why they do it. It's a salary, all of that salary gets updated. Everything like mm-hmm. literally changes. And I did receive a great performance evaluation. Shout out to you. So shout out to you. Bro. I was really flowers, happy for nah, that. For yes. And then also meanwhile, my daughter's in school. She received straight A's the same week. Yes. So Let's those go. were the, you know, the ups to it. So it's like, yeah, we've been in the house. It's been stressful, but we're still performing at an exceptional level due to the circumstance. So that was the good side of it. Um, you know, so you gotta take your your, your highs with your with lows. Your yeah. yeah. So that that's was my week. That's pretty good, boy. Yeah. I'm proud of you. Thanks. I'm really happy for you, Shorty. You know why? Why? Cause all right, so I'm gonna tell y'all why. So Shade uh first she started her um her show. Did you talk about that last week or? Uh, I, I, I told them I would be dropping it and then I actually dropped it. Right. Uh it's a show vlog. Little inspiration, um, just you know the things I like to do and talk about, you know, and for my tribe to follow that journey with me. So, also I'm proud of you for doing that, right? And then you was able to give yourself grace when you was when some things was going on. I fuck with that. I also fuck with the. Uh, we had like a little, we had some arguments this week. However, so I'll tell you this is real relationship shit, no cap. Shade. Bro, like the relationship shit is is, is real. I'm gonna tell you what. I mean, I just gotta collect my thoughts. But so uh we had gotten into an argument yesterday, and I'm just fucking heated. I'm upset. Like, yo, this is my fucking nerves. Straight up. I just get, you know what I'm saying? So she had texted me and I think she was like, you know, um, she just she was like, you know, I don't wanna argue. Um, I just want us to be able to talk. Apologize if if, if you felt like you can't talk, et cetera, et cetera, right? So I'm, I'm thinking to myself, like, Okay, you know, like, cause usually, like, I don't get those things a lot, right? Especially when she's in her 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 moods or whatever, I'm trying to tread lightly, right? So she she yep, <laughs> you got yep. something uh-huh. to say? Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. <laughs> so Thanks, she texts so she texts me so she, so she texts me and said that, and I'm like, you know what? Even through the argument, right? This time wasn't like the time before or the time before. And I say that to say, like, I just want to say I'm proud of you because I'm just happy for you. Because, you know, even though we got in an argument, the argument wasn't as heated as it once was at a time. Mm-hmm. Also, I thought you handled today good, too, because we got to another argument this morning. And 
He was a little kind of standoffish or whatever, but I ain't mad at that. You know what I'm saying? I ain't mad at that. You was, you know what I'm saying? You were taking a step back, getting your, your thoughts together, and you still recorded today. I'm happy for you. I, I think it's dope, and I want to acknowledge the growth and and your part in that. You know what I'm saying? Thank I think you. it's dope. I yeah, appreciate yeah. it. Yeah, yeah, I did have a... Uh, uh, Try to make me cry on camera. This is a beautiful <laughs> thing right here. It's an emotional week. I'm we probably get into it week. later on, but it's yeah, fun. And, and we, can, uh, that's, we can have some fun on the podcast. Yeah, like, <laughs> I just want to still acknowledge you know, that And just we... to be clear, you know, let Jay tell it is because I'm on my period. And yes, I have an attitude. Woo, there we go. Yes, sir. Yes. Thank you, Mo. Just relax. So, you know, I do have, I just... I, I do have cramps. I do have an attitude. Just oh. relax because you're doing a lot. So, mm, and all that mm. to say is. I'm just glad you said you it. Know, I'm happy. I'm proud of you again. Um, all that Sheesh. to say is, you know, I'm going to give myself my flowers as well. Thank you for yours. But I'm going to give myself my flowers because, you know, growth you says. and always says, uh, it, it's a lot of growth that just comes with how you react. And, you know, one thing I've been just tracking my own progress of how I used to react and how I react now, like just even in, you know, if you know, you know, it's been a lot just this month, just with, you know, the cast and our own personal you know, vendettas just with the relationship and things like that. But like, I'm really strongly working on my reactions to things. So, you know, I do appreciate you noticing that, you know, and also just giving my own flowers because bitch, it ain't easy. Okay. And truthfully, I did not want to record today. And I'm just going to let you know that as a creator on this show, I did not want to record today. And I literally had to tell myself, like I, I sat in the bathroom, like real shit. I had to pray to ask God to give me, just like a little to get out of my own way because at first I was just like, I don't know how I'm about to record because I'm not in the mood. Like I really don't, but just to get me out of my own way to be able to be transparent and still articulate and communicate the purpose of the show. And as we know, the purpose of the show is just to grow and to relate and to walk through it with y'all and with our own relationships. So, you know, here I am. Yeah. Shout out to you, bro. With a drink because I needed how, it. How was, be careful with that drink. You know, how, was, how was your week? My week was cool, man. Bro, my weeks be good. Like, I ain't gonna lie. Like, so my week work wise, it was kind of rocky. That shit was irritating as fuck. But then, you know, I got a lot of like bookings as far as interviews and shit. So, like, it kind of made up for the work. Um, I had somebody help me with some things. Uh, matter of fact, no, nah, shout out to Milani Brand. You know what I'm saying? Um, he had hit me. I told him I was trying to get like another lens and shit. I don't know if you want the people to know this, but they gonna know because. He my guy. He helped me out. Uh, he was like, man, I got you. Whatever you need. Wow. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So that's, that's a blessing. Support, yeah. You know what I'm saying? So um, shout out to Yeah, like shout out to the real friends. You know what I'm saying? But um, as far as the week, it, it, the week itself was annoying as fuck, right? Mm -hmm. Like work was just, it's cold outside. You know, my job is just ridiculous. And, but towards the end of the week, it got better. You know what I'm saying? And um, yeah, that, that was me. But I... How was yours? I know you was going through some Wait, things. Man. You, Alex. Yeah. We missed you How last week, Alex. Alex. Uh, I was dealing with some depression. We know that I go on my uh, depression kind of spells. But this one was, was deep because it was dealing around death and like RIP to all the fallen soldiers. But I kind of was like on an anniversary of a friend passing, but then another funeral mm -hmm. around the same yeah. time. So it was just really dark during that time. But like the outlook and why I'm even here and able to speak and have a conversation was, you know, I always heard that mental illness and stuff like that isn't people that are weak, mm -hmm. but rather people that were strong for too long. Mm -hmm. And I felt like I was mm -hmm. in a place where I was just strong mm -hmm. and holding it for so long. So it just yeah. came out. But shout out to all the friends, bro. Like the support from everybody was for just, sure. it was, because people could tell, you know, yeah. like I'm normally a yeah. happy go lucky person. But so when I'm distancing myself and I'm closed yeah. off, not posting and all that stuff, people could obviously tell like something was off. So people reached out, it was endless yeah. support. And it's okay, you know, yeah. like, and one thing that Jay said when we talked, he was like, bro, like, I just don't want you to feel like something's wrong with you for feeling like this. Like, it's okay to feel sad sometimes. It's okay to go to these seasons. Um, but I was feeling, like I said to yeah. him, survivor's remorse, yeah. you know, and I had to identify mm -hmm. with it because I had my own trauma and stuff yeah. that I've survived. So yeah. when you see it on someone else, it's kind of like, what is different from me mm -hmm. than them? Right. So then you start to get down and grieve. But Having conversations with everybody definitely brought up my spirit. And again, RIP to the fallen soldiers. Yeah. We are gonna ball for y'all. Uh, but yeah, I'm I'm getting I'm healing. Well, I'm getting happy there. You're and I, here. Yeah, I wanted to talk. I wanted to. Yeah, I wanted to talk about that because you was like, you know, you led with uh, y'all know me and be dealing with depression and stuff like. And I I don't think that's true. You know what I'm saying? Because like you said, like 
for the most for as long as I've known you, I've never really seen you down. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So I would have never known that you was dealing with these type of things, right? Mm-hmm. But the fact for me it was kind of dope, not saying the situation was dope, but the fact that I saw you in this moment and you was able to talk to me about it, it was dope for me because you've always been there for me when I was down, mm-hmm. right? So it was kind of felt good to me to 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 be able to be there for you. Right. right. So like um but I say this to say, like, when you say, like, you know, I'll be dealing with depression, I feel like a lot of people don't know that mm. because we always seeing you being that strong friend, mm-hmm. right? But, um, and, um, you know, and just, just to highlight that depression looks different on everybody mm-hmm. because, like, you know, typically depressed people are walking amongst us all the time, but they're not like outright, like, look, they don't look like depression because depression doesn't look like anything. Nothing, like, you right. could be just as fabulous as you are and smiling and walking here. And then when you go in your room and you go home, you dealing with it to yourself um, mm-hmm. and internally. So, you know, and that's just a shout out to the people who are walking amongst people who don't know, not because they don't say it, it's just because a lot of times we don't look what we've been through, so. Mm-hmm. And um, speaking of that, like that goes into our first topic, we're talking about like, are men afraid of emotions, right? And it's crazy how these things, oh. mm-hmm. um, it's, it's crazy how like these things come full, full circle, right? Cause mm-hmm. we didn't even know we was gonna talk about it like this. Right. But the, f- I was asked the question, do y'all think that we are afraid, men are afraid of our emotions and are afraid to let them out and show um, it? So I can't speak for all men because it just varies. Like, I think some men may be okay with channeling their inner emotions, but I can say for what I've seen other than men I've known um, and dealt with, I think men do tend to suppress their emotions a lot um, in a way where it's like, it's either they don't want to talk about it or when they do talk about it, they dumb it down because they, I don't know if it's because they don't want people to feel like it's much more than it is, or if they don't want to feel like a burden or if they feel like nobody can help them, or even if they just don't know how to identify what it exactly is or what it's coming from. So I do think that not speaking for all men, because I know I don't want men to watch this and like, not me, like I'm intact, but just speaking for those men, that I do feel like a lot of men do suppress their emotions or do not know how to identify with their emotions a lot. Um, and that just reverts me back to, you know, when we were recording in Atlanta and Lonnie just saying, like, men always been taught to kind of push their emotions backwards. To compartmentalize, yeah. To exactly, like, you know, or to almost not feel it. Um, or if they do feel it, suck it up. So, mm-hmm. you know, it, it's definitely understood where it comes from. Um, but my question is, you know, What's the step forward from that? I mean, I don't know. I don't think that, like, I'm afraid to show my emotions. However, I can see how somebody could be, right? I can see how, like, life has been so judgmental to us that even when we do show our emotions, now we're, we're looked at as too emotional or we're looked at as a bitch, right, for lack of better words, or we're looked at as we're not supposed to say these things. We aren't supposed to have these feelings. And especially in relationships, you know, like, I feel like it's times where I want to say how I feel and I want to be heard, right? Like, I'm pretty sure everybody want to feel like they're being heard. Mm -hmm. And I think these are the reasons why we don't show it as much because we don't want to go through that. So it's like, okay, you know what, you know what, well, for me, I can't speak for all men, but it's like, you know what, if I show my emotions in this way, Mm -hmm. I'm going to be looked at as this. You're not going to listen to me, which, was, which is going to make me even more upset. So you know what I would do? I'm going to just sit back. This is going to pass and I'll get over it. However, from that, I think that not being able to show our emotions as men, I feel like it, it falls. That gives us other problems, right? I was going to say, over so, time, it becomes resentment. Exactly, yeah, right? Now I can't. It. And it keeps building up. Mm-hmm. And now when, when something keeps building up, it, eventually it's going to bust, right? So then when it bursts and it busts, it, it busts in the times that we really don't need it to bust, mm-hmm. right? Then we get into fights. Now we probably, I don't know, putting our hands on somebody we shouldn't have been putting our hands on when all we had to do from the beginning was have just say how we feel and have mm-hmm. a conversation. It just is so hard for us as men to have conversations because honestly, from our perspective, niggas don't give a fuck. Period. Like, you get what I'm saying? What do you feel like? Because you're a man, and how do you feel? And you just was going through so, something. So, it's funny that you said that, because, like, I was talking to my sisters, actually, today. And, like, I was talking about my emotions. And, you know, cancers, we're, we're deemed as the emotional sign. Mm-hmm. We're That's always crybabies yeah, we or this, that, and the third. But it was funny, because, like, my sister, I was on the phone. I was like, I'm cool and collective. I'd be chilling. And she was like, yeah, okay, Mr. Zero to 100. So, I thought about that. I was like, dang, like... With most men, because we're not able to communicate it at times, it's either one side or the other. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And not able to have the in-between conversations. Yeah. So like like you just said, either we're calm completely, and we're not really calm. We're probably already at 100, but we're showing that we're at a zero. So then when it blows up, we're at a 1,000. 
you know so uh, for me it's really just trying to have the the means to communicate if i'm at a five at ten building up to 100 so that if i do get to 100 you saw the process and you 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 saw me getting there as opposed to me just jumping and it's like a blow up because you never knew so then now mm. you're just like where did this come from and it's been ten thousand things that built up on it right so mm. that that's it and it's hard though because the scary part is when you do be vulnerable if it's not received well <laughs> a lot of men just run back to that shell it's like right. see this is why i didn't do it in the first place now it's crazy because a part of that question we were talking about you know men not being able to show their emotions and why do we feel that way but uh women and ladies being so emotional that it could be dangerous right mm. why is it that you think that um men look at it as being dangerous when women are so emotional or is it that why do we look at it as women being too emotional what do you think about that in general um the statement women so emotional that it's dangerous i think that is a man's perspective because mm. typically they already are suppressing their emotions mm. so when a woman taps into their emotions it's like um you know it's almost like look at you you're acting like that because you wouldn't you wouldn't dare step into that room you know what i mean and i think that i think that there's just a fine balance between the two however the same way men or both of you guys i heard say like you know, if we if you we if we show our emotions, then we're vulnerable or we're called a bitch. But yet the same judgment is going on women mm -hmm. as we're showing our emotions. We're called dangerous or too emotional mm -hmm. and things like that. But women just choose not to clam up because of it. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? We still continue to show it, you know, for our own reasons. Like maybe it's just, you know, some of I, I won't lie and say, you know, because as I was growing up, I will say when I was younger, you know, I was so emotional that it became like a frantic thing. Like, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? So I would like, it would be like frantically emotional, like for no reason, right? Like not for no reason, but I would, but that to me was a lack of self-control. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? But as you get older, you get more self-control. So I'm allowed to be emotional and adapt all my feelings as long as I have self-control that it's not being detrimental to certain things. So what, what do you feel like, like, how did you get to that point? Because you said it was frantic. So what yeah. was the, the path to that kind of build that balance? Um, was it so, just well, trial by error? Or? Yeah, it was trial and error. So like, like when I mean like frantic, like say, for example, in prior relationships, I'd be so emotional that I'd be like, I'm done. Like I break up and mm -hmm. or like I'm like short fuse. fuming, mm -hmm. sh short fuse, kind of how you say zero to 100. Like mm -hmm. it was really just 100. Like, you know what I'm saying? So as soon as emotional, it's 100. It's, it wasn't no... Oh, you got me fucked up. Mm -hmm, Let me think mm -hmm. about it. I'm not going to go crazy, but hold up. You got me fucked up and I'm going to process it first, you know? And I think just by trial and, error, trial and error, you get older and it's like, you know, let me process this and how I really want to react and what's going to, what's warranted my best reaction right now. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So, um, you know, and I just, the only thing is it's like, you know, I don't know who made it okay to call anybody too emotional. And if you're not allowed to call a man too emotional, why is it okay to call a woman too emotional? Mm -hmm. And I think that goes into the conversation of uh, being emotionally unavailable versus being uh, o overly emotional. Mm -hmm. Because overly emotional is a thing, just like being emotionally unavailable yeah. is a thing as well. And do you feel like men are emotionally unavailable? Because I, I, I'm not gonna lie, like as a man, I do feel like sometimes my woman can be overly emotional, but right. just have me having that opinion, I feel yeah. like you could have the same opinion as, nigga, you're not even emotional enough, right? Like, right, exactly. Do you feel that way? Yes, I do feel that way. I do. Okay. <laughs> yeah. No, because, and what I say, like, you know, I so I did do some research and I, you know, just to get a fine line of the things that are warranted um, to be called emotionally unavailable, mm -hmm. right? And some of the series of the things that I read through many of articles uh, well, first and foremost, you know, uh, it's the it's the uh, men who don't really do too many committed relationships, right? So one thing when I met Jay, I remember we spoke and he was like, I don't really, you know, I wasn't really dating no girls. Like I was, nah, they mm -hmm, go, right? Mm -hmm. And then me and you got together. But prior to me, you had a relationship or you had two relationships, but most of your time was to the curb, to the left, right? So, which made me think like, okay, what habits did that form that never got resolved even when you were in a relationship? Because you still were doing that at a time and what changed, right? Mm -hmm. And then there was other things like, you know, men not being able to deal with your emotions because they're emotionally unavailable. So there's no way you really can process my emotions 
completely if you're emotionally available, which makes you lack empathy. Not you directly, but mm -hmm. I'm saying what I, you know, which also returns into invalidating feelings. Mm -hmm. Because if you can't fully empathize because you're not you fully in tune with you emotions, won't understand the feeling. Yeah. you won't really understand. So even when you say you understand, you don't because you don't even deal with your own emotions to be able to process mine. So now in detail, in return, it causes you to invalidate my feelings or women's feelings because you're not even used to even stepping into that room anyway. So how can you say you empathize? So what's, so, all um, right, I'm going to tell you, I think, I don't think that it is what it is, what it is. I don't think that I'm not stepping in that room. I'm just not stepping in that room with someone else because I don't feel like I can. But I, always, I honestly step in that room a lot with myself. So you know how we always say, like, sometimes you, 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 un, you subconsciously give somebody else what you want, right? So I think sometimes where, where we need, well, as men or as myself, sometimes when I'm listening, I'm trying to be empathetic, right? Well, I'm, what I'm doing is I'm giving you what I want. So I'm trying to understand and, and relate to you. But that might that just might not be. I think we had this conversation mad time, but that just might not be what you want. Because, well, it's because when you whenever you're trying to empathize with somebody by giving them what you want, you're not actually giving them anything mm. because that's not what they want. Like mm -hmm. if you're empathizing with me, then the process is to empathize with me, not in the way you would like to be empathized with. So how can you? empathize with somebody when it's only on your terms that would mean that i would need to be empathizing with you right. in your moment so it kind of gives a it's, it's a, a tug of war choice. at that yeah. point like because it's now it's like okay you, you you're trying to empathize with me and i can i can acknowledge that but you're not empathizing with me because you want me to subconsciously be you want me to deal with the situation the you, how you would yeah and at that point it's not fair right you know what i mean mm -hmm. so i think that a lot of times that's where a lot of communication errors end up happening is because if i.e men can admit that they do suppress emotions then they will also have to admit that it also comes causes some type of emotional unavailability right and if it's causing some emotional unavailability ability uh, unavailability therefore you can't possibly completely empathize with somebody in their shoes right so how, so I, I definitely get to understand that and i can see how being emotionally unavailable can be a barrier to understanding and being empathetic to someone else, right? So, you know, I think the problem is we don't say what we want, right? Because we, only thing I can give you is the best of my ability. But if the best of my ability isn't good enough for you, if you don't tell me, right? Or if we don't role play or practice this, then I'm gonna continue to do the wrong thing. However, that's how it goes into the next question of like, what is the right way to be empathetic with you or to, to be emotionally available with you? So it's crazy because, um, and I thought about that when Alex was, you know, giving your, your flowers about how you dealt with him and his time and you were telling him, you know, it's okay to feel like that. See, I think that's the problem right there. Men will say it to their friends. It's okay for you to feel like that. But the minute it's their woman, now it goes to, it gets personal. Cause it's like, you're feeling like that, but it's over me. So now I can't say to you what I say to my friend because see, to my friend, I don't have nothing to do with it. So I could tell him, you're warranted to feel that way. It's okay that you feel with that. Feel all your feelings, bro. Cry if you need to. But I'm not going to look at my girl and tell her, baby, it's okay to feel like that. Cry if you need to, if the cause is me. Mm -hmm. You get what I'm saying? So now it's it's no longer empathetic because you're taking it personal. So I, I can see that for 100%. The thing about it is, I think this is the... So these are the conversations that need to be had because when you said that, I'm going to tell you what I thought because I was about to agree with you. When you said that, I'm like... The first thing I thought was, damn, I couldn't say that to Sade because I've done that before and she didn't like that. Because there's been moments, and I think I've told you where, when you felt some type of way and it was probably with somebody else, I'm like, yo, nah, just let her feel how she feel. Or I'm just letting you feel how you feel. And you was like, you didn't like that. Remember it was a moment when I was like, I'm just letting, I'm, I'm saying like, it's okay for you to feel like that. And I'm just letting you feel that way. Again, the situation you're talking about had nothing to do with you. See, that mm. situation was me and somebody else, okay. a friend of his, we got into it. He told his friend, let her feel how her, she feels. Okay. Same. He's not, it's, you're not the problem. Okay. But when you're at the end of the issue, that. you don't do that. Like, okay. it's not like, so how, baby, feel your way. I know I'm the cause, but feel your way. You are warranted mm, to feel that way and cry if you need to, because you know what? It's okay that you feel that way, but, but you're way not going to do that when you're at the end of the stick. No, that's a fact. I get that. Yeah. But I think what you just said shows it like, if I don't feel I'm the cause, I wouldn't say that I'm the cause. Like, if I, if I genuinely, if you say, I feel this way because of you, right? Mm -hmm. And I'm saying, yo, well, I didn't do this or 
let's look at it from another way like because i didn't or i didn't mean to do that that's not even mm-hmm. say i didn't do this right let's mm-hmm. say let's say i didn't mean to do this right mm-hmm. i feel like why can't we compromise if if, if i if i did something to you right and it hurt because things our actions can be hurtful right but if i come to you and say yo i didn't mean to do this like this i can understand why you're upset just because i'm not definitive just because i'm telling you my intent behind it don't mean that i'm taking away from your feelings if i say yo you know what i can understand why you feel like this but i didn't mean it like this you know what i'm saying all i was doing was this we is no middle ground am i supposed to just say you know what let you 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 could feel that way the reason why i'm gonna not agree with that is because right i'm gonna just bring it back to Isaac. tell me if this gets too touchy please right alex is sad Mm -hmm. right he can't blame god for taking away his friends right and he can't look to him and be like i know you didn't mean to do that but you did that right like at that at that point it was the the inevitable Inevitable, and it happened no matter what it happened so he's still warranted to feel sad. He yeah. can't go back and be like, you know, you know, nobody's coming to him like, I didn't mean to do that, you know, rah, rah, rah. But he's still, even if it wasn't, even however death happened, it was an accident, no matter what, it still happened. To tie that in, whether you meant it or not, it happened. Right. Mm-hmm. And to take away that, to say, to say to somebody, well, I didn't mean for it to happen, so... That's not saying you can't say to somebody that I didn't mean for that to happen, so you shouldn't feel that way. No, it still happened. So now, it, go, my bad. Alex. Now I can look that look to that as a factor of why I don't have to hold it against you later when I'm over it. Mm-hmm. But it doesn't mean I'm not warranted to feel that feeling in that moment. Period. 100%, yeah. So to say like, oh, I didn't mean for that. Understand my intentions. It's fine. I can absolutely understand them. But it doesn't take away that it didn't happen. So, so does it kind of go back to well, this is what he was Wolf spoke when he was talking about cheating. But manslaughter versus capital murder, like right. when it's intentional versus when it's it's right. still a crime. Like right. it's still you didn't mean to do it, right? But like you still did the you still did the crime. I'm still somebody's still affected and, and, and by and it. So, point, do you feel like that's even, the even a manslaughter? Manslaughter is really accidental murder, right? You didn't really mean to kill the person, right. like if I accidentally run you off the road because I didn't see you coming, I'm still could catch a manslaughter crime. Somebody still has to get. Yeah, they're still, they, they're, they're still punished at right. some, at right. some point, like at some point you still have to pay that fine. You still have to get your license revoked. Something has to happen to show you, yes, you didn't mean it, but look, some things are too, co- some mistakes are too costly to make. Right. You get what I'm saying? So at that point, yes, it doesn't mean you're, a capital murder and like you intentionally try to kill me like however you accidentally killed me bro right so, so you right. deserve some type of accountability so what i and i'm just trying to understand so first like i'm not god god is the only person who he is like he's the only person in his image right mm-hmm. um so when you say G- alex can't question god and saying like that i'm pretty sure it's people that question god all the time but right, god, of course. you know what i'm saying like i don't god isn't going to come in uh in a human flesh and say I didn't mean it like that. You know what I'm right. saying? So I don't think that's a, I don't think we can compare me to God. That's fine. Right? And, and, and then, that's fine. But and then when it we comes can to the, capital murder and Yeah, and, and then when we come to the court system, right? I feel like the court system has many of flaws. Like, mm-hmm. and I feel like I always say the gray area is what makes us human. So the court is very black and white in my opinion. I, I think it's very black and white. And if you do something, you go to jail. Sometimes if you got enough money, then you don't. When I say about these, I want to come down just, just a, a level lower than that because I feel like we are human and we aren't the court system. We aren't Jesus Christ. We aren't God. So when it comes to these things, right, I'm trying to understand what is it that you really want in that moment? Is it that, okay, even if I don't agree, is it, do you want me to say, okay, I apologize. That's it. And if you do want that, right, just because I'm just trying to, I'm just trying to understand. I'm really just trying to understand. How do we get better? How do I not do that same mistake? If I don't tell you my intent, if I just say, yo, my bad. Hmm. If you don't, you, your reasoning behind. You know what I'm saying? Like if I, if I if I just say my bad, you can feel this way because it's what you sound like. It sounded like you want it. You say my bad. I apologize. You can feel that way. Cry if you want to. If I say that, how do I learn from the mistake that I made? If we don't have the conversation. So I, I, for me, this kind of goes into my segment, right? Mm-hmm. And my segment was uh, Mokin yeah, okay. for me, mm-hmm. right? Because I feel like it goes right into that. So my segment was normalizing saying when you're just not the best person in that moment or in that relationship. And the reason why I say that, I, say, I think that sometimes, like, honestly, your intention is yours, right? right? You know it better than I know it, mm-hmm. right? That's just like somebody telling you, like, I know myself, right? So therefore, a lot of times, I don't really have to explain myself because I know myself, right? So even in those moments that you may have not meant to do something, you did it, if you simply say, I'm sorry, and I, I was wrong to you at that point, you know, for whether that's my 
Intent or not. Whether that's my perspective that you did me wrong. If you can't tell, like, if I say you, just like, you'd be like, that's disrespectful. I might not think what I did was disrespectful, but it's disrespectful to you, right? right? So in that moment, if that's what I found that you disrespect me, I'm sorry, I did disrespect you, right? Take that. Whatever your intention is, you know it, you fix it on your own next time. I, you don't have to tell me, like, this is why I did that every single time. I think it does take a level of discernment to know when, you know what, she's really hurting from this. I don't need to go into my whys and my warrants and why I didn't, and you know, it wasn't like that. And you know what I'm saying? Like, because then it also invalidates some of the feelings that I'm experiencing. So simply saying and owning what you did is enough. Like right. you don't always have to explain over because what happens is a lot of times when we're explaining things, I think we end up putting in too much extra verbiage that didn't need to be there. Like the unnecessary, the unnecessary, the blah, blah. Unnecessary. Unnecessary. The unnecessary, right? Honestly, I don't know. Honest. Thanks, Lex. My drink. So, <laughs> uh, so I, I think that sometimes we say things that are unnecessary, and then it sparks another thing. Now, now it's another thing. So now we're why? Well, why would you say that? Because we're talking about this, and now you done said that. Now we're in a whole another situation, which takes away from my initial feeling in the beginning. So now we're somewhere else, and now. Nine times out of ten, we're stuck here. We argue here. That doesn't even matter no more. So now I don't get the justice that I deserved right there. And now we're in another situation. Mm. And now I'm probably not going to get it here because now we're arguing about why this is wrong or not. And guess what? Nothing happens. Nothing happens. So do you understand the what she's trying to say? Essentially, like, yes, to a degree. But kind of like when, if I heard correctly, yeah. like, why we... If I'm bringing you a problem mm -hmm. and you're bringing me a problem back, essentially, we're never going to. It's like it's a tit for a tat right. situation. But I guess what he's saying is if I don't bring like bring a trying to bring a resolution, I think what you're trying to ask is the proper way to bring the resolution, which is what she was saying. But the, the conversation here is just what do you do when you have two different resolutions? Mm -hmm. Right. So like, mm -hmm. that's, like and that's, and that's why I actually, because like for me, because I don't, both of y'all have a resolution that right. y'all yeah. would want, but mm -hmm. they're just two different resolutions. Your resolution is explaining where I'm at right. with the situation. Your resolution is I need to process this right now. And all I need right now to prove forward is an apology. Mm -hmm. And then we can have that, con that exactly. second conversation once it boils down. But right exactly. now, as we have it, when it's heated, to me, you're just throwing, so, we're throwing wood into the it, fire. Exactly. So and to me, that's the resolution. From the conversation, I didn't hear that, though. I didn't hear we can have, like, for me, that we can have this conversation later means everything to me. You know what I'm saying? But I didn't hear this. It's like, okay, you could just say this, say that, and say this. And it's like, if, I, if you come to me and say, I wasn't being considerate and I did something, to be considerate, like I, 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 I literally did something intentional to be considerate, right? And you say I wasn't being considerate. The only thing I could do was say, only thing I could think of, not only thing I can do, only thing I could think of is let you know that I'm sorry. I was trying to be considerate by doing this, so maybe you mm -hmm. can see why I was being considerate. But now I'm understanding. If you're upset, you don't have to say I was trying, right? Just be like, you know, I apologize. We can have this conversation later of how I was, what I was trying to do later on, just not in this moment while you're bringing an issue to me. That's me being empathetic and me really taking accountability in that moment, right? Mm -hmm. And something that I've learned, correct? Uh, yeah. Oh, all right. something that I've learned over time, um, and I say it to my girlfriend all the time because she, she kind of like will vent to me about like how other people, like what she expounds, ex expects from other people, like mm -hmm. responses and all that stuff. And something that I have to remind her though uh, is meeting. We talked about this, but meeting people where they at because sometimes they're not you, mm -hmm. and if you expect me. Out of you, you, I mean, you from them, you're going to mm -hmm. let yourself down every time, mm -hmm. you know? So it's also having that kind of discernment and that reason to realize that like everybody isn't me. And a lot of things, the way that I was brought up, the morals and the way that my mind processes isn't the same as, but mm -hmm. having that, it's the grace. It really boils down to grace. Cause mm -hmm. even with my girl, like she's very emotional, you know, like, and she, sometimes her emotional, her emotions are intense. Mm -hmm. And if you don't know who she is and you don't know her spirit and you don't know that it's a really calm spirit, you might take it as like, she's trying to attack you or bite or something like that. But it's just really like when she goes at her emotions, she has to deal with it right then and there. Mm -hmm. So it's like mm -hmm. so emotional that like, she's going to intensify it, make her so cry, think about it. So, but like when she's done with it, I'm done. Like, right. you know, I'm, mm -hmm. I can move forward. So it took that was hard for me, though, mm -hmm. to see it in the beginning, because I'm like, why would you keep reliving it? Mm -hmm. Why do you keep bringing up this pain and this mm -hmm. trauma? Because I'm trying to suppress it. But right. that's not right either. Mm -hmm. You know, what I mean, 
So trying to expect that, I had to come to a realization like we're different. We just have to meet each other and respect right. each other and validate each other's feelings. So something that I always tell her is like, yo, your feelings are valid. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like it's okay to feel like this. Mm -hmm. It's okay to have this feeling right mm -hmm. now. When you're ready to talk about it, we can move forward. Mm -hmm. Because I know how I feel as a cancer and you know, when I am trying to, yep. I don't talk about it often. Yeah. But the minute you, I'm trying to talk about my emotion, if you shut it down, I'm in my shell. Right. And yeah, you're, I'm never going to talk mm -hmm. again. So like to mm -hmm. decrease and remove ourselves from those situations, it's just a matter of like trying to get that middle ground. And yeah. it's a growing process, y'all. It's yeah. really hard. I ain't going to yeah. hold you. I think, no, nah, because yeah. I, I think I'm like, I'm definitely like more on the side of like wanting to talk about it right then and there. Mm -hmm. And I think like we just have to be able to communicate what we want on both sides, right? Because mm -hmm. I feel like, and if we talk about discernment, if you come to me telling me something that I didn't do that I think I did, I'm only it's only I think it's only human that I'm gonna tell you, like maybe you saw it wrong because I I did that. You know what I'm saying? Maybe you overlooked what I did, and I I don't think that's fair. You know what I'm saying? If I if I did something, if I if I came to you and complimented you, right? And I just this is an example of way left. If I gave you a compliment, right, but you didn't see the compliment, and you come back like ten minutes later and say, "Damn, bro, you don't never tell me what I did positive." I'm like, "Bro, what the fuck? I just told you that you was this." You know what, mm -hmm, what I'm saying? Like mm -hmm. for me. I'm thinking we could come to an understanding like, oh, shit, I didn't know that. Oh, all right, now I see how you, you know what I'm saying? But I'm, I'm hearing that you got to sometimes, knowing your partner, right? Knowing that you got to come back later and have these conversations. Not, it, It's not suppressing your feelings. It's right there. Just make sure that you understand or make sure you validate your partner's feelings. It's like so, a game of cards, like you said. No one to hold, no one to fold. And then... So I just, uh, you know, and I think... I think what the problem lies for me, um, agreeing with those solutions, however, right? So... Tell me if this is too much, right? But, you know, remember when you had your job with the kids and you got fired, right? Mm -hmm. And you got fired for doing something that everybody else was doing, right? right? When you told me when they approached on you, they told you you just didn't even argue it. You just was like, fine, right? Yeah. Women want the same respect. When you're at work and they tell you you came late or you did, you probably know you came on time, but you're not going to argue like... You shaking your head already? You all right? I'm listening. Oh, okay. But you were shaking your head? Yeah. Okay. I'm just saying. Um, so you're not going to argue with somebody in your workplace or like even like, you know what I'm saying? Like, oh, I wasn't late or I wasn't or I came this many times on time. Like, you know, or I do care about my work or rah, rah, rah. You're going to take it on the chin and you're going to be like, you know what? I'm going to just tighten up. I'm going to just tighten up because I don't want them to say nothing to me. I'm going to just tighten up. I'm not even going to say nothing. If that's how they feel, fine. Next time, they ain't going to have shit to say to me. You feel what I'm saying? I want the same grace because at that point, like if I'm telling you and this is where my topic comes in, because I feel like a lot of times. For for example, I, I'm not going to speak for all women, Mo and Lex, I could agree if you don't, that's fine. Right. But I'm going to speak for myself. Right. I feel like a lot of times with I can, I'm not going to say men, I'm going to say with Jay. Right. A lot of times if I am. If I am telling you something that you're doing to me. And you keep telling me, nah, what I did do this, I did do this. Then how could you learn from me what I like, what I'm, what I'm requiring? So if, like, if I keep telling you, like, that's inconsiderate to me, and you like, I was considerate, I was. So when are you learning that that's not considerate for me? When, when, when is the accountability? Like, you know what? That's what I thought, but obviously that's not what it was. That's not what she's experiencing. You know what I mean? When does the accountability set in? Because again, what is wrong with all right, you didn't like that, my bad, you know what I'm saying? And next time I know she just doesn't, like my way that I tried it, that doesn't work for her. And I can say, not speaking for every man, woman, but women I do know, I have, I've had the same conversation with. It's like, we'll tell a man something, and when we tell them, they're too busy trying to tell us what they did to prove that they did it for a woman. I'm the woman. How can you tell me that's warranted and I'm the woman? So when do you accept when you accept it and say, because I feel like how do we, how can we at the end of the day, I'm just say what it is. Right. We all have errors, you know, due to our generation. They did the best they could. Right. Mm -hmm. And there's things they simply didn't teach us. There's some things that we're still trial and error. Right. Mm -hmm. So no man's perfect. No woman's perfect and no relationship because we're going through these trial and error through these traumas. Right. So if I'm telling you as your woman, this is what requires to love on this woman. How are you telling me it's the opposite? And you're not the woman in this situation. So how do you learn to cater to this woman if you're not going to take it? So I think, um, <clears throat> I think first of all, you're doing a great job at like elaborating on your points. And um, I just don't agree with it. Like we're we going to go to the, the first example you said, right? If we're at, we at work, I got fired for going to sleep on a job. I would sleep on a job. 
But if I said, like I just said, like my example was, if I give you a compliment and five minutes later you tell me that I don't compliment you, I'm going to say, bro, I just gave you a compliment. So if my job said they was firing me for, I don't know, um, I don't like if, if my job said I, they was firing me for not coming to work with my uniform, I'm going to say something back to my job because I had my uniform on. I was just asleep. You get what I'm saying? So like if, if you're saying that I wasn't being away or a such and such way, and I feel like I did something to be that way, I'm going to tell you that, yo, I did that. You get what I'm saying? So that's where I think the disconnect is because now in the beginning, it sounded like you, you want me to just say, you know, and this is why I think it's confusing to me and um, maybe to some men and hopefully this conversation can help. But at first it said, it sounded like, okay, you want me to say, I apologize. It's okay for you to have this feeling. It's okay to cry. That's okay. We can have this conversation later, right? All I'm saying is if I felt like, but now we're saying, now it sounded sound like if you want, want me to take accountability, but if I don't think I did something wrong, I'm not taking accountability. Like if I would have got fired for not having a uniform on, I would have said something to my boss. I wouldn't have, I wouldn't have just took it on the chin. I only took it on the chin because that's exactly what I did. Like we had a conversation about when you asked me to clean the uh, the microwave or something. I'm like, yo, I got to take accountability for that because I didn't do this. But if you bring in something to me and I'm like, yo, I did this. You know what I'm saying? This is what I did. However, because I like in, in, in the conversation, I feel like when it comes to that, I'm the type of person that will be like, you know what? I can see that's not being good for you. You know what I'm saying? However, I did it because of this. And I'm thinking that we can come together to have a meeting and be like, okay, cool. You did it to do that, but that doesn't work for me. Then I can say, you know what? I can understand how that doesn't work for you. How can we move forward? Move forward. This is what I think being considerate is, or this is what I think loving on me is. This is what I think listening to me is. Okay, cool. My bad. My worry didn't work. Now we can try your way. And I think that's, I think that's a, like a healthy conversation that could be had. And I feel like, if again, anybody, if I come to you with something that you that you didn't do, you gonna you wanna kinda give me some pushback on it if you know that you didn't do that. Or if you know that you did if I say something, if I said you did, didn't do something you did it, you wanna kinda give me some pushback. I feel like it's subjective on what it is. Because mm -hmm. again, when we're talking about consideration and I when I said you didn't take me in consideration and you find another way that you did, mm -hmm. that's another way that you found. Okay. But when I'm saying I didn't get when you weren't consideration you didn't when if i come to you with a problem and i say mm -hmm. you weren't considerate right to me here mm -hmm. and you go here and say but i was considerate to you here that's not what, but that's that not, is what happened we so, can break it down so, if you so like so you're talking about the um the car situation right? right you were saying that i know that you and you could correct me wrong yeah. you was in the house all week we just said you was mm -hmm. frustrated you was in the house all week right I love this conversation because the way we having it is so dope like from episode one mm -hmm. but i just want to make that note notice and i want to give you a rose for that we're talking about how you was in the house all week you expressed to me before the situation that you was frustrated for being in the house right i got off of work early and i was able to come home and do some things that i wanted to do i wasn't considerate in a moment because i could have took you out the house to do something took you and my out the house to do something because i know y'all you guys was, was trapped in the house all week right i could have took you out the house to do something before i handled my business right i could have um handled my business later or Whatever I could have been considerate to get you out of the house, correct? Finish. I'm, I'm, I'm at like that I was. I'm just trying to see where you're going completely. So that was your your frustration, right? You was frustrated as you trapped in the house. Coming home, I asked you like, "Yo, do you want to come with me?" That was my way of being considerate because I known you've been in the house all week. So my way of being considerate was, "Yo, I'm about to go handle some business. Would you like to come with me so you can get out of the house?" So when you when you say, "I don't like the way you treated me," or "I don't like the way you handled me this time," because Wait. you wasn't. Go ahead. I stop right yeah, yeah, there go ahead. before before you move forward. When he said that, what did you want? Before um, you get to I what you did, what way, did you want? I don't think the way he's explaining my experience was my experience because that's oh, not how okay. I experienced it. I feel okay. like he's experiencing. He's telling it from his experience of okay. what he experiences, right. and I think that's also another disconnect. Like okay. when that's his experience and how he's perceiving it. Right. But my perception wasn't that. Like it's a lot of other details for me that played mm. into a lot of factors okay. of how I felt. Okay. So when he's leaving those things out and leaving those conversations out. To me, you already can't empathize with me because you're not even sharing the same experience as me. Well, that's okay. interesting because that that's a lot of things. I feel like that happens a lot. Mm -hmm. Like our experiences or how we view the experiences the experience are very is different. different. So like if that's your experience and you perceive it that way, of course that makes sense for you. Right. That's yours. Right. But if I'm telling you my experience is completely different and there's other things that warrants into that, you know, that experience and you leave those things out, you're not empathizing with me because you don't even understand why I'm saying what I'm under I'm saying. So therefore we can never come to a median if I don't even feel like you're fully empathizing with what I'm dealing with okay. or what I, what what's happening from my experience. Are we talking about the like the job situation or Well, it wasn't that like you know, you know I explained to Jay, obviously, you know, for the you know, I think we talked about this before like my car went down, right? So my car's broke. I work from home. I didn't need to go get a car. 
So we have one car, we got another car, that car went down, so we're back to not one car, right? Mm -hmm. Right now, right? So I work from home, Amaya works from home, I'm with the kid all day, we're in the house. Jay works, you know, he doesn't work in the house, so he goes to work. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, I can't take the car, like go drop him off, whatever, because he has to do what he has to do for work, so I end up being stuck in the house, so lunch, everything is kind of like, it falls like we have to do everything from the house, right? right. No matter what. Friday gets here, Jay, takes off early. Mm -hmm. So he comes home, I'm like, why are you home from work? And he's like, oh, I just, he was like, I needed a day off. So I'm like, okay. So he's like, well, I gotta go pull up on my friend to go handle some business. I'm gonna go run some errands and these things. And I, mind you, prior to the week, I already explained to him, like, I'm tired of being trapped in the house. It's annoying, like, I can't, like, after school, I, I can't take a mind to the park. Like, I can't really do anything because you have the car, you have the work, but this is the situation. I'm a little frustrated, but we'll deal, right? He takes a day off. He gets off early. So in my head, I'm like, okay, you're off early. Maybe you'll take off some of the load that I just explained to you through the week. Maybe you'll take a mile out for ice cream or you'll take, you'll be like, okay, you know, I'm off early. What y'all want to do today? You know, he ends up going to handle his business and he went and hang with his friends. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Now he went and handle business. They end up in conversation and he ended up being with his friends and that's fine. He may have needed that. However, I just expressed to you that I've been in the house all day with the kid, me and Amaya are trapped in the house. It's only one car and you go handle your business and you go hang with your friends. Hmm. I didn't feel like you considered us that day. He did come in. He was like, do you want to come? I also, I told Jay before, like, bro, when you're going to do your business, that's not my idea of an escape to go tag along to do your business. If you want to take me out to go do something to get away from my escape, that's different. But if you're going to ask me to come with you so you can handle your business, I'm now still feeling trapped because I have to do it around you. Like, it's really what you have to do. So I've already explained to him when you want to go work and you want to go do these things, that's not an escape for me. You know what I'm saying? That's you just not having to do one thing. You're, you're taking two things, just tying it to one to convenient for you. That's interesting that it, you but said it that. But it does, that doesn't work for me because now I'm just, I got to be here while you're working and doing your thing. I'm going to be sitting here, but it's not getting me away from my, you know what I'm saying? So I still have to wait for you to like, and I said it to him, I was like, no, I don't want to go with you because that's not helping me. Like, you know what I'm saying? So that's interesting he's that like, so I told him, you know, the next day I'm like, you know, I just feel like you weren't considerate of me and Amaya. Like, I'm like, you got off early. You went and handled your business instead of, you know, coming home. Like, you know what y'all like, oh, you know, I'm gonna catch y'all tomorrow. I'll hang with y'all tomorrow. But today's Chade just said, been, you know, complaining that, her and I have been stuck in the house. I'm going to go take them to Dave and Buster's or something, right? You went out. He's like, but I asked you if you wanted to come. I was being considerate. And I'm like, you're not hearing me. You're not hearing what I'm trying to tell you. Because me coming with you makes no sense to me. Like, I'm not trying to go with you to work. You know what I'm saying? That's interesting. I want to fucking go to the park. I want to go to the mall. I want to go do something that fulfills my desires of escaping work and home. I don't want to go with you to work. You get what I'm saying? Or to handle business. That's not an escape for me. So that's where the disconnect came. Him feeling like this is I'm helping because come with me. So and you, me feeling like that's not helping. I wanted you to give us some time. So do you Reason think why, my, do you think that the problem is the lack of paying attention because when I hear that right now, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna try to be fair as possible. When I hear that, I'm thinking like, why didn't you? Because you didn't say that in that moment. Like I didn't you, say what? You didn't say, um, yo, that's my, that's not, that's not my, my idea. Of I escape. did. Okay, so in that moment, when I asked you to, did you want to come with me? You were just saying like you was frustrated or whatever. I said no, I'm not coming with you. I don't want to do that. I right. was like, I don't want to go with you to work. I said I want to do something else. Right, but see, when I'm here, so like when when Alex was saying like we're gonna see, do this and we're gonna talk later, right? I'm like, when you said we'll talk later, that right there made it make sense for me. So in that moment, you didn't say that's not my idea of an escape. So I understand that. However, you did say this before. So I'm thinking maybe is it lack of paying attention? Because if you said it before, I should, I should remember that. But when you said it, right, I'm thinking like, damn, why you ain't just say that in a moment? Like, that's not my idea of an escape. But if I would have been more attentive to, I guess, the conversation that we had in the past, then I would have understood that. Right. 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 And, and I, I feel agree. like both. I and, think and, 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 and that I will agree with. Um, I won't say verbatim that I said that's not an escape for me. I do say, no, I don't want to do that. I don't want to go with you to go do work. I did say that, right. but I didn't say that's not an escape. But I have told Jay, like, I stopped going out with Jay when he goes to work. On the clubs. Pre yeah. I, we've talked yeah. about that before. I was like, I'm not going to the clubs with you because that's not fun for me. If you want to take me out, take me out. Mm -hmm. But I'm not going to keep going with you to work so you, you could find the time to still be with me, but you're still working. Right. That doesn't.
fulfill me, right? right? So yes, I did. You know that though, right? So I will say is yes, I didn't say an escape. However, I still said no because I was like, I don't want to go with you to go do work. That's interesting. You know what I'm saying? However, I did say to you before, like that's not my ideal of so it, you just, know, doing that. So yes, I would have appreciated if you were more attentive. So to just like, but just like how that. I can recognize and acknowledge that you know I, I got to be more attentive and listen and 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 taking into consideration over time. Do you can you take accountability for? maybe not saying what you want in that moment because you i feel like just like i could be more attentive you can also be like you know what i could have said this in that moment like that's not my ideal for escaping we could have came to another resolution so i will say partially i agree with that however because i literally just told you that i was tired of being in the house i told you what i wanted right you know what i'm saying so because you got off work and you decided to go do other things i still told you like bro and like before he left like i literally Broke down. I was like, bro, I'm so sick of this shit. Like, and I, I was like, you, did you want to come with me? Right. And that's where he asked. But prior to me, like, breaking down, you didn't ask if I wanted to come. You didn't. You were making your own plans. You were doing your own thing. And that's where the consideration for me fell in place. And, because okay. it wasn't about the asking me if I was coming. It's the fact that you got off early and you found 50 other things to do versus, you know what? She already just complained about this. I'm getting off early. You know, that was his choice to leave early. You know what I'm saying? If he was working, I would have understood it. There's I already understood it. he's working, like there's nothing we could do about that. Deal with it. The weekend's here. But you chose to you get off early. Because they don't even know. But I, I see I Not like it. this conversation because I just feel like it's cool. I like this conversation because it's all I, to me, I think it's all about perception. And I feel like these are why the conversations is dope. And I don't I don't feel like one side should be thrown under the bus. You know what I'm saying? Because even the way I hear you speak about it is like you chose to get off of work. I only chose to leave work because I had to handle some other business that I deemed was more important. You know what I'm saying? So it wasn't that I chose because we all know my job is commission, straight commission. I didn't choose not to make no money to do something to hang with my friends. I chose not to hang. I chose not to make no money because I felt like something was more important. So, but but I respect what you're saying. But I think in these moments, we I it's, feel like even when we're frustrated, we should be able to have those conversations so we can understand each other. I don't, I don't think so nothing is wrong. What with that. I will say is the first day. We had the conversation and it was fun. Like, you know, he said, no, nah, I know it's hard. We're going through a rough time right now. You know, the car situation was, we got to focus on getting us the other car working because whatever. Right. He was fine. It was the second day when we went into that and I told him I was still upset about it because I was like, you know, once he did what he had to do that he deemed more important to work, he, ch he chose to hang out with his friends. Right. You know what I'm saying? And me, consideration, just me. And again, this is my own expectation, as you said. You know, sometimes if we think people would do what we do, we're let down. Me, personally, even if I had business, I'd be like, all right, y'all, I'm going to check y'all. Y'all want to hang out tomorrow? Because Jay been in the house all day. Let me go kick it with him to Maya or take a Maya or take Shade out because they've been in the fucking house. Like, right. you know what I'm saying? That's what I would have did. Mm -hmm. And that's what I expected from him. So accountability, I shouldn't have expected you to just think like that off the rip because that's how I would have thought which let myself down because that's why i was upset because it's like damn like you know what i'm saying however i also feel like i should have known you should have known and respect and I, I think we can end it at that i feel like man we got to do it. me not just men do a better job at like really listening to our partner and not listening but no it's it is listening it's listening i was going to say the difference between hearing and listening okay I feel a lot of times when men when when our significant other talks sometimes we hear them but it's like actively listening to mm. them and uh i think because if like I was listening to Shade, I would have known I not think, to ask her to come with me because then, that's not her, her. I would have known that already. Also, not just that, but then also, like, we're moving fast in this life. Mm. And, like, I was telling you, like, the reason why I blew up this week was because we're moving so fast. Like, what I broke down about was two years ago. Mm. You know what I mean? But I have to deal with today and right. tomorrow. So I can't even process what happened two years ago. So we're moving it's almost so like fast, living in the moment. Sometimes. But it's just like really giving yourself the time to prioritize what is important. And it's just like, all right, bet this is a time that I got to set apart. And it's funny because I similar. The reason why I was like sitting here like, wow, like mm -hmm. I, I went through a similar situation where like, you know, I was at my girl's house all the time. We working together. So in my mind, we hanging out. You know right. what I mean? Like, yeah, I'm missing. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But she literally had to sit me down like, no, nigga. This like, not I want to go out. on a trip. Like, exactly. after we're done with this, we got to go on a drive somewhere. Yeah. Even if it's just us driving in the car and we're sitting in the car and we're yeah. talking to each other. But my mind, when I'm on work, because that's the type of person she is, like, you can see her face. Like, her emotions and everything is on work. So, like, her energy is different. But the minute mm -hmm. we hop in the car and it's like, we're going to McDonald's. We could be going to fucking Popeye's. But that drive, it switches. Like, you can mm -hmm. just see, like, this is my escape. Yeah. I don't have to think about the pressure. There's no pressure. Yeah. This is just intimacy. I got a question for you, bro. Mm -hmm. And both of y'all, right? So, like, in these moments, we get frustrated. And I'm pretty sure we talk to our friends a lot. And, like, sometimes we probably say things that we don't mean and things that, like, it's upsetting. Like, man, fuck this motherfucker. Or whatever the case may be, right? Mm -hmm. As friends, when do we, when are we supposed to jump in? Like, like when, when is it time for us to 
you know, step in for our friends. When, especially when something uh, like is going wrong or something like that. You just, for me, is just knowing your friend. Like you, 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 you know your friends. So you know when it's a cry for help, like mm -hmm. their patterns are a cry for help and you know when it's like not to overstep your boundaries. But then sometimes you got to try your hand. You know what yeah. I mean? Sometimes you yeah. may not know, yeah. like, but it's looking like a yeah. little, and if it, if it isn't that, yeah. and, and your friend is like, I'm good, all right, cool. You know, you get checked, but I tried. At least you can say as a friend, I extended that, the handout. But it's just really knowing, for me, it's knowing your friends and knowing that like, this is not like, for example, me this week. Like everybody could tell, like you even said it, like I never seen you like this, you know what I mean? And I haven't seen myself like this. So like when everybody around me could see it, like they were like, no, something's wrong. Like, and I was like, no, I'm good, I'm good, I'm good. And they're like, you may Not feel good. it, but we can see you and yeah. we know you. Like, yeah. this ain't good right now. Yeah, you know, I, I definitely think it's going into, like, knowing your friend because I also feel like we also know our friend's shortcomings. Like, when you mm -hmm. talk to your friend and you know your friend, you know where they're struggling, you know where they self-sabotage, you know where they're going wrong, you know where they're going right. So, like, you know, if you see them taking a the wrong turn, I think it's always good when you see a friend. Like, I, like you know, I've had friends in relationships and I've seen them taking wrong turns and I'll be like, look... I know you think this is a good idea, but it's really not. And I know you and you really don't want to do that. You're really doing it out of this reason or that reason. And I think you should try this way. You know what I'm saying? Um, but it is it has a lot to do with knowing your friends, you know, or like you also got to make sure you guys already have that relationship where you can step in. You can't just be stepping in. Like right. if you never stepped in for your friend in certain areas. And, you know, shout out to Lex, because um, I remember one time like uh Couple, uh, like a month ago or whatever when we was going through with uh not me and jay but with another ex-friend what? what are you talking about <laughs> <laughs> wait 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 because you met lex while we was oh you talking with another friend i'm about to say i, I was about to say like what? another ex-friend whatever and oh, right. something i really something i really liked about lex she reached out to me and she said please let me know if i'm overstepping my boundaries mm. oh my god i thought that was so like I, I appreciate that so much because I, I put that in the same boat of when you ask your friends, are you in the mental space to deal with this right now? Mm -hmm. Because you really have to ask, you got to see where people are because you don't want to overstep your boundaries, especially if you don't know if y'all have that relationship. And it also opens a door to have that relationship. Mm -hmm. If you didn't have it before, it's like, no girl, that was dope. Like, yeah, no, for sure. So now they know, like, you know, I can, you know, get my input because sometimes people can be standoffish, like, ah. Like, no, you didn't just come out and give me an input and I ain't asked. Or it could be yeah, so abrupt. advice. Right. Yeah. It, uh, the advice could be so abrupt, you get nervous and you don't know how to take it. Right. Because it's like, how you know and how you see me? You know what I'm saying? Because people are still learning how to see themselves. So the minute that somebody else jumps in that they see and want to give advice or whatever, you know, that softening to make it okay and to give that welcome it's so needed. So like if you don't have that relationship with that friend or if you don't know if it's OK, just ask. Like and I think that's just dope to do. Just ask. Like, is it OK if I, you know, if I ask you something, if it's OK, if I touch in on this or my thoughts, is it OK? Because then it opens that door. And then if it is closed then you know, like, OK, it's not my place to jump in. So I won't. You know what I'm saying? Like maybe they have another friend that they're OK with, mm -hmm. but I'm not that friend. And that's OK, too. You know what I mean? Good. I ain't gonna lie, man. I, I'm jumping in with my friends all the time, but that's I think it's different because it depends what like you said, know your friends, right? Yeah. right. Type of relationship. I feel like my closer, my closest friends are like my close friends. Yeah. Like my circle of friends are like my line brothers. So we've been together, we've been around each other a lot. Pause. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So like we've been around each other so much that I know that even honestly, even yeah, even my line brother that I don't talk to the most. Even if, or, I, or the, the one I talk to the least, if I see him going through something or if I see him making a, a irrational decision, I'm going to step in. You and I think, mm -hmm. I don't know if that's a male thing. Well, maybe not. Because I feel like a lot of men don't hold each other accountable. However, my circle, we always like stepping in like, bro, you're wilding right now. Even we don't agree. Boy, go ahead. So what I will say is that- you can talk I, about your experience with your friends. <laughs> you notice how I ain't say nothing because nah, that's your relationship. As soon as I say- I wasn't saying nothing about you. I was just saying, I think something else would men too would say, like, for example, like, even if you do jump in, I don't think like men, I don't think they're as, I don't know. Like, it's something about like, even if they did feel away, they're not going to tell you. Like, not, then that's I not just, true. I don't that's agree. That's so not true. And I also feel like sometimes, like, I don't know. How can know. you not agree with how me in the relationship with my I'm homie? I'm not saying that. It's just that. You said you didn't agree. I'm saying I don't agree that men always how can you just not be agree with that? welcoming. I'm not talking just about you, Jay Hill. But you can't agree with men. You know, in today's society, right? <laughs> don't. No, 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 how no. Listen. Give me the hookah. Listen. Don't point it at me. No, why give you me can't the do that? And relax. Picture me saying, picture a woman 
having woman conversation talking about woman, right? Some of what they do with women. Picture a man saying, I don't agree with that. Picture. I don't think okay. y- you oh, do that boy. with your friends. I, I didn't say that. That's, that's not what I said. Crucify. That's not what I said. That's woman business. But that's not what I said. I don't agree with that. I said, I don't always agree with that because picture me having a male friend who has told me that he didn't really appreciate when his friend jumped in on something he had no business jumping in, but he never said okay, nothing. Okay, that's know. what I'm saying. Experience. So what I'm trying to say is I don't think that's always the case. I'm not talking directly with your friends. I just feel like sometimes men, because they're men and you guys don't like to be emotional if they did feel away they wouldn't say anything i'm gonna tell you what i think about women i feel like sometimes women be so up (laughs) (laughs) because i feel like women be so emotional that that's real tip for tap but it's okay because we understand it ain't tip for tap fairness I'm about to write but see, the press you took release. it personal. You see how quick you took it personal, I'm and joking. I wasn't even. Oh, oh now you joking? Go ahead, drink I really drink. don't care. Drink, drink, I don't drink, care what women do. No, I don't care because I can't. Honestly, you do and that's care what, what? That's a lie. In today's society, right? In today's society, and I just want to touch on one more thing because my drink has crept up. So oh in the beginning, God. Jay said. Go. In the beginning, in the beginning, <laughs> spicy. In the beginning, Jay was like, "You already know." In the beginning, Jay was like, "You know," because I don't see this often, Sade text me whatever do you guys remember a couple episodes back because the clip was on my page where it's like Sade text me Ah, she apologized I apologize (laughs) now can you guys ask me when Jay has texted me first and was like baby I'm sorry rah 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 I'm glad you said that (laughs) I'm so glad you said that um it's been plenty of times. Well, well, first of all, I don't have to come back and att- I don't have to come back and text you. I apologize because I'm apologizing in a moment. Oh, you sure? In person, yes. Mm-hmm. Um, two, I was going to say this, but I'm like, you know what? We gotta move on. I was going to say this during this show. First of all, I said it a couple episodes ago. Why? Because it was so unheard of or unseen, right? That's why I said it, right? However, throughout Is that this whole exactly? I'm that sorry. you apologize, I'm like, look at this. It was su- surprising, <laughs> right? Last time, right? Yeah. yeah, you just acted surprised again. But no. that was only a couple episodes, baby. No, no, I'm, I gave you your flowers. But you said this say, doesn't happen often, but, but it just happened yeah, again. It, it happened again. Watch okay. this though. Guess what? Guess what? Woman, you know we talk about not throwing glow, glass stone, not throwing rocks if you live in a glass house. Uh-huh. Woman asks for affirmations all the time. Okay. Throughout this entire show, I can ask the audience. How many times have I given Sade her roses? Multiple. <laughs> how many how, how many times have I gotten my roses from Sade this episode? None. Okay. No, cool. ho, 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 because nigga, I thanked you for giving me my roses. Fuck is you saying? Wow. Oh. I thank you for now. My point, my point is thank my, you for your thank you. My point is, my point is, I think that when I see things, I acknowledge it. So you saying you asked the question was your, your question was, yeah. Jay said he saw he, he I apologize. How many times has Jay texted me? Nah, it ain't about that. But how many times have you given? Why well, it's not about that? No, That's because I'm gonna tell you why. It, it ain't about that because how many times have you came on and said, "Yo, shout out to Jay for apologizing." At least I gave you your roses. I was able to see and I was able to give you your roses mm-hmm. and, and clap for you. So. But when I'm doing it, when have you came and said, "Yo, you know we's having a conversation," and Jay did apologize? I'm giving you your roses. You just cheers him? Exactly. Because, Ooh. like, you uh, see, don't uh, throw stones if you live in a glass house. All I'm going to say is, I will, I okay, so judges. accountability, I will give Jay that, but just like he says. Oh, she got one foot. Finally. <laughs> give me some. <laughs> oh uh. Exactly. Exactly. That's exactly I feel why, good. I'm saying I feel but good. All I'm going to say is this. First of all, Thank you. I, the reason why I can do that, though, is because I give Jay affirmation all the time. I like your haircut. You look nice, babe. Oh, yes, babe. Da, 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 da. So it's second nature to me. So on the show, a lot of times I'm not giving you your flowers maybe here because I do it in person a lot. So guess what? So you maybe I'm not doing and something in person, because so I give on, it on, in other on, places. On, on air a picture, lot. Picture, picture, picture me saying I can't for the cameras. See, picture me saying <laughs> no, no, it's no, for the gram. It's no, for the YouTube. Picture me y'all. saying it's for the listen, YouTube. It's for the YouTube. Picture me saying I do this in this way, but I and I don't do it in this right, way because right. I do it in you're other right, ways. You're right. You're right. You're right. You're right. Well, you're right. Uh, thank you. You're right. You're right. You're right. Moving on. Do y'all want to talk about well, yeah. Yeah. I can't ask y'all this because y'all clearly want to talk about this shit. Y'all can't talk about it. Y'all clearly want to talk about this shit because. Again, I can't be in woman business. So when I see Chloe Bailey, mind your motherfucking business. When I see Chloe Bailey, right, I just be like, Chloe Bailey doing what Chloe Bailey doing. But clearly, <laughs> y'all had some opinions about this shit. So what are we talking about? Um, so what happened was Chloe Bailey been ripping got the internet. On, she been she, she been, been t- tanning it up. The girl looked good, proud yep. her. Right. Long story short, she was on live and she was crying about the mess that it has created because mm-hmm. people have been 
you know, giving her a lot of backlash for how she's been perceived as she has now got her own Instagram mm-hmm. and no longer Chloe and Haley. She's just Chloe Bailey. Mm-hmm. Well, they still have the other one, but yeah, they, you know, have, they the both have their own. Yeah, yeah, but now they have their own platform and baby has been showing out. So, so I know, I'm sorry. But yeah. Right. I'm so ignorant, right? I swear. When every time I saw a Bailey, I'm like, are we saying it wrong? Because I thought it was Chloe Haley the whole time. Haley is the sister. Yeah. <laughs> My bad. That's, so, why, you know, that's bad about you. I thought it was. What are the coincidences that, that her last name would be Bailey? Haley Bailey, Chloe uh, Bailey. That's whatever. actually cute. But yeah, go ahead, oh, babe. Yeah. I'm sorry. Uh, dang, not on the green couch. It's all right, Lex. They done burned up. She did that shit on purpose. Yeah. Cause she's that's that yeah. payback. Cause they talked in the room. Wow. <laughs> they talked in the room. Jay wanted us to admit that we talked in the room. The so bad. Circle. He said the it five circle. times. He said it. They talked so in the room. Talk they talked in the room. room. So, so, so y'all ain't talking in the room. So so so, 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 so y'all ain't talking in the room. I'm. I know for a fact y'all talking in the room. Because you was in the room. No, I wasn't in the room. Because he was in. He was in. We was in the bathroom. He came in the room. Because you know the bathrooms in the room. Whatever. I'm sorry. Finish saying what you saying about Chloe Bailey. Oh no, you don't want to admit that. Now you want to go on, right? No, I didn't go in the room. So you was by the door. No, he was by the door. I wasn't by the door. Mm. Nah, uh, he wasn't. I wasn't. Because that's woman business. No, no, you trust me. You trust me. No, I'm not excited. You trust me. You trust me. Let's finish talking about Chloe Bailey. Long story short, Chloe went on live and y'all made the baby cry. Yeah, I made the baby cry because she was overwhelmed with. Speaking of the baby, the baby's crying right the now. Baby, <laughs> is the baby crying right now? Because he broke up with me, bro. She thought. <laughs> she thought. She said, "Light skin is what <laughs> he want." I don't know if that's Clearly. what he wanted. <laughs> Yellow bonus, what he want? Ah. Clearly not. Yellow bonus, what he want? Something happened, but anyway, um, anyway back to the belly. <laughs> Yellow bones is what he want. Oh, oh man. Wow. Good times. Oh. <laughs> no, what he want is some shit with some bop in it. No. <laughs> Jake. I'm a young CEO. Shit. <laughs> go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. Uh, that makes sense why he was posting his challenge on his page with I, I, with the bitches and they was his to his new song you know he wild in that song but anyway long story mm. short um so yeah yeah i made the baby cry not the baby chloe as a baby <laughs> as y'all will call it mm-hmm. you know she's 22 baby is grown she's mm-hmm. not a baby uh but all that to say is why do women see what do women see as sexy right the reason why that's the question is because you know there's been a lot of spinoffs of her live where men have been putting her in this category and basically saying like you know Now she's grown and she's trying to do her sexy thing and she's getting the backlash. Realistically, she's grown and she really doesn't have to explain to anybody because she is grown. However, she came out here explaining and she crying and she's saying a woman, she a God, but you know, she doing a cry baby challenge, riding a dick in a challenge and all these things. So the question arise, like, first of all, what is the problem about women being sexy and what do women see as sexy? What's you the problem? Got, you gotta tell us. Cause I don't, like, what's the problem? Oh, no. I don't, I don't oh, want no smoke. Oh, 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 that's a woman business. So that's a woman business. Y- every other second, oh, every other second, that's y'all know business. women, y'all know, and the women and the women's and the women's, and now it's like I don't know, it's not my business. What's Close the problem? Like, that's so woman I didn't even know it was an issue. <laughs> uh, so for me, honestly, there is no issue. Like I feel like you know, Holly, uh, cloak. Now you got me fucking up her name. Uh, <laughs> Chloe is very grown. She looks very good. And, you know, I'd call it the Disney effect. You know, when they have those roles as children and they're growing up and they have to kind of set themselves apart from that Disney criteria. You see in all Kiki Palmer, Hannah Montana, uh, all yeah, Hannah Montana they all oh, kind of took Cyrus. that drastic route of like going out their way to let y'all know I'm a grown ass fucking woman. Y'all going to respect it, you know. But if you see somebody like Beyonce doing it, nobody says anything. It, it, OK, so. Now it's not a problem, but when you see her, because you guys are so used to seeing her in a certain light, all of a sudden she's doing too much or she's doing too much for the gram. She's trying to get attention. And I think that's where it really boiled down to is people saying she's doing it for attention. And she was really bothered by that because who, why is when women, why when women are just tapping into their sexy, now they're doing it for attention? I'm going to tell you now, now I have a, I have a opinion. I'm going to tell you why. Well, what is it, huh? First well, of all, typically, I don't why do you perceive little, it that way? Let's say, why you perceive it Typically, I don't got no turtleneck. why you perceive it that way? I don't got no turtleneck dress on. Y'all know I'm coming with the titties and the ass showing. So, you know, it's just another snowstorm, snowy rainstorm. So, I'm in my little sweater. But typically, you know, I'm out here. So, what what's the problem? I'm and t- it ain't never for attention. Nah, so, hey, what is so, it? But, no, no, like, that's, see, me, I'm very, like, literal sometimes, right? Mm-hmm. 
first of all, everything we do for something else <laughs> is for attention, like in what? my opinion. Social media itself is for attention. If nobody gave a fuck about attention, we wouldn't care about how many likes we got. We wouldn't care about how many views we got. The 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 uh, the owners of these big companies wouldn't care about how many listens we get. You get what I'm saying? They don't. They wouldn't care about this. So the fact that you we have social media that clearly means the things we doing is for attention when we post it to social media. My my question is, what's yeah? The wrong? ladies in the back. Mm-hmm. That's, that's fine. That's fine. My question is. Why don't we just own it? I'm doing it for attention, so, so what? So can Who I ask cares? A can I wait? Oh boy. <laughs> the, way, the, the women's is mad in the back. So let me ask y'all this, right? Oh boy. If an artist posts art on social media, is they trying to get yes. attention? Yes, of course, of course. Or are they trying to show their art? They're trying to show their art so they can get attention from their art so they can get paid. Yes, it's for attention. Debatable. So what I think is, like, for example, okay. You can say that social media is for attention, but also people have their families who live in distance following them. They have college friends that they moved away to London that's following them. And it's really just to stay updated as well. When social media started, it wasn't just about attention. It was keeping your closest people updated on what you're doing and how you're doing it, i.e. Twitter, i.e. IG, i.e. Facebook. It Mm -hmm. was really started that. Now, viral moments and these things created where you can get a lot of views at once. So yes, there are some people and influencers that do get paid for it and that is fine however a lot of times you know no different than either way say if you took social media away mm-hmm. i guarantee you girls will still be taking the same pictures in their phone mm-hmm. and they'll be sending it to their friends for a t- so no that's you if you didn't want attention, attention you wouldn't send it to nobody no, or is i look good bitch you, you want somebody no, to validate no, you looking good not that's attention. a validation thing Sometimes pe- we already know we look right, good. Let me ask you something. Like you got th- we already me, know we let me look ask you good. Something. Let me ask you something. Let me ask you something. We do this podcast first because we love it. Well, first because we right. right, we love it, right? Okay. And honestly, because it, it can help other people grow through their their problems and relationships, right? That's the main priority for me, baby. Right. Cool. Okay. To to help, right? Okay. If when we do a lot of views, does it make you it. feel good? Honestly, yes okay, or no? I'm gonna t- say yes. Cool. I'm gonna tell you why. It's the reasoning. I'm gonna tell you why because the more people see it, the more people could relate, and the, and more, the more people, people that can, can get help. through their problems. Okay. Right? Boom. Now, what about women who typically look good and absor- ab- absorb their confidence? You know what it does for other women? Get them to absorb and, in their fucking confidence. Right. It's a motivation thing. Right. If I've been going to the gym six months straight, bitch, here I am. You go to the gym too. Or bitch, be okay. Put your little bathing suit on. You look good, sis. Whatever. A lot of times it's not just for attention. It's I ain't for say it was just mo- for attention. Okay, though. fine. But you mainly place it as attention. What I'm saying is a lot of it is motivational purposes only, right? When I get up and I look good every week and I post a picture, is sis, you feel good too. You get up and you post your fucking picture too. You got a right to do that. Feel beautiful in your fucking skin. I don't think Chloe's doing nothing different outside of baby, I look good. I'm participating in the challenges like everybody else and I look good while doing it. Uh, Time so out. what? Before you go, Alex, before, right. I'm going to let you go. Before mm-hmm. you go, just let, I just want to re-emphasize this. I'm not saying that's her sole purpose of doing this. I'm only saying once we got to the, the conversation about attention, why can't we own that? That's all I'm saying. No. I'm not saying, that she does, I'm not I'm saying, saying she's doing is, it solely for attention. But when people are attacking you for doing something for attention and you're not, it's a problem. Because who are you to deem what I'm doing for attention as Fair. you did when you first came in? When I said that, you said, so we're going to say that social I'm, media is not for attention. I'm saying attention. it does play a part. I feel like attention does play a part. And we can't, why, what's wrong with owning but, that? Uh, but what if that's not their reasoning for them to own so it? If it that's wasn't, your so, reason. So if, if, it, if you do it for attention, just say no, that. No, no, listen, if it wasn't, if it wasn't the reason, she wouldn't have celebrated when she got a million views. If it, if it ain't for attention. D- Jay. What? Jay. 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 Exactly. I was about to go there. I was just about to go there. So if you, you know, obviously you guys can't hear the audience like that. So it's okay, Lex. So that's where I was going next. So the thing is, when she got on the live, she was just saying at a time she was very insecure. She was, you know, felt overweight. She felt too thick for whatever reason, because, you know, people make that a thing. And she came out and she where? was just, she was just absorbing how she felt good about herself. So Fair. it is really good to see people it enjoying is. herself, basking in her sexy energy when she was once insecure that's so, not uh, technically an uh, attention thing that's a i'm happy in my skin thing respect so question uh kind of the segue because shout out to lizzo the you know and that's why i was about to ask this question where I go back to what do women see as sexy yeah 
a reason a, a lot of the reason why I feel like there was kind of a divide and you could speak to this cuz I'm not a woman. I Thank don't have a uh, input on this. No do I really Unless care to have input on it. Unless yeah. you got something to tell us. No, 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 no. Whoa. Just whoa. <laughs> <laughs> but but uh basically <laughs> that threw me off. But um a lot of women were criticizing her. Yeah. So where does that disconnect I come feel like a when lot of, you find I, like what do you women wanna, you find wanna as sexy? Hundred percent honest. I feel like, like the so. What women is that? Who you got to understand? There's a lot of insecure women out there as well, and there's a lot of women who have not tapped into the sexy energy, or they allow men to, or or other people. I won't even just say men to scrutinize what they deem as sexy. So now they're like, oh, I can't do that because then men are gonna see me as sluts, or I can't do that because they're gonna look at me like. I'm not wifey material. Like, and I feel like when women realize that being who you are, you know, some people, honestly, it is what it is. Some people just sexy. Like, they're not even trying. Like, that's just who they are. It's just, it's in their nature. It's in their aura. They exude sexual energy. Absolutely. It's not for nobody but me. Like, if that's who I am and that's who I want to absorb in my energy, mm -hmm. let me. It has nothing to do with you. So women who are upset about it, baby, fine but you don't the if you're upset over here exude whatever you in you got on your, your yourself because you don't need to be looking at me then unfollow don't look at it if you're if it bothers you don't be over here if, if sexual energy is not your preference that's fine then go do your artsy shit or whatever you fucking do stay over there but this is sexy women business oh now you're against artsy say. shit then no, I'm not saying that. I'm just saying whatever they do, if it's artsy, gypsy, motherfucking, I don't fuck a nun, bitch. I don't give a fuck. I'm just saying, just exude in that energy and leave the sexy shit for the sexy bitches. That's what I'm saying. I think this conversation is just like, it's just, it's simple for me. What? People do what they want because they want to do it point blank, period. Like, that's okay. why, and for me, it's like, yo, if she want to look sexy and she want to post it on Instagram, I don't give a fuck. I don't care. What about when I do it? Because. Shade, cut the bullshit. Because I'm the one that, Encourage you to do that. Okay, good. I just wanted to say. Right, you be cap, <laughs> big cap, big cap. I didn't cap. I just wanted to see what you were but, do. But but I can't lie and say it's because not another. I won't be in a sweater much longer. I'm hot. It's, it's not another. I, I won't lie and say it's not another side of me and saying that I feel like we do things for attention. You know what I'm saying? Like, and I feel like that's okay. And, like, but I just feel like if people come out and say that's not what it's for, accept their reasoning. Who yeah, are you I mean, I don't me, listen. Who are you to tell me what I'm doing is for? Like, what if I just like like. You know, like, and it's crazy because I was going to talk about this on one of my vlogs. It's like, you know, you know, even sometimes I, and I just think women sometimes are You going to pay for this promotion? Yes. Because it's like, man, try, try, throw the little. Oh, my vlog. I, so I'm not, I can't promote my Yeah, go ahead, man. No, I'm joking. So <laughs> <laughs> try, do a shameless follow, plug. Like, uh, shameless I was going to talk about this in my, in my, follow, my vlog. Like, because nigga. Jay didn't want to put me on his network. So follow <laughs> Hiller B YouTube because he. Cause he's he's already hating on me, Sam. Wow. <laughs> so, so all I'm gonna say is, at the end of the day, like I said, leave the sexy shit for the sexy bitches. If you don't like it, don't like it. But all I'm gonna say is, stop judging people. Let people do what the fuck they want to do. And if they want to do it, so be it. it. Has no concern to you. Does it mind the business that pays you? Mind a business. Find some business. Do something. Create period. your business. Listen, I'm gonna say shout out to my he's brandy. Speaking of businesses. Shout out to my he's brandy. Uh, you want your shit again. Black owned business. Um, DMV based. Make sure you follow him on the social media. That's M A H E E S B R A N D Y. My he's brandy because he got us a little tips and you know what they say. A drunk mind speaks sober thoughts. And Rich, when no. Shade said he won't put me on his network, I never said nothing about not putting her on my network. But that's clearly how she feels. Yeah, so he's been scouting other people to put on his network. What he think I'm not worthy. Anyway, can I, do you mind if I do this other shameless plug? I just have to, uh, I just want to, <laughs> hold on. So, you know, I, I'm always here for a black Now we're in a promotion podcast. No, we're not a promotion podcast, but what, what I'm saying they is. They pay us. No, but sometimes when you really just like something, I'm okay with, you know, celebrating. Promotion shit, our, man. Go ahead, man. Thank you. So. <laughs> I was going to do I it just anyway. I say, I love black owned brands and black owned brands have done their thing through the pandemic. They made it a pandemic and I'm really fucking proud. So what I'm going to say is I want to shout out to Juicy by J. Because first of all, Shorty doing her thing with her brand and everything. And this lip gloss is one of the best fucking lip gloss I've used. And you know, I am here for the makeups and lip gloss be expensive. And not only is this cost effective, but it's also vegan friendly. And it also is donated every time you buy one. So all I'm saying is lips is popping. She gonna give me some? 
Yeah, because, come on. Cause, cause honestly, you hold on, now, honestly, what? you got you got your own platform now, right? You got your. Are you gonna I'm talk gonna, about I'm that on your it, shit? I'm, I am gonna do it there too. What are you talking about? I'm talking about that. Sorry, 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 sorry. Shout listen, out to Juicy. Your name Juicy. But Juicy by J, aka Jasmine. Um, you know, and I love all her little quotes she leaves. It says, first of all, you look bomb. It's always going to be the lip jelly for me. And that's on period. It's always girls in their affirmations. They love affirmations, but don't ever want to give us none. Um, are you all right? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty well. Lex, take the drink back. Yo, shout out to the whole gang. Hey, Jim and I scope your podcast episode. Uh, wait, did y'all want to talk about Nick Cannon and stuff? Nah, Nick Cannon got, got back to the bike. Episode 58. I'm right. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, I, I Jim and I scope your podcast. Go time Episode Brady. 58. I know. Shout out hot as shit in that <laughs> turtleneck. Oh, um, yo, thank you for all the subscribers, everybody that uh, first time listeners, long time listeners. Make sure you uh, subscribe to the channel. Make sure you turn the notification bell on. And you know, that's a wrap. It's, it's a, a it's fucking wrap. wrap.